my beautiful people. It is Sherry Moulton back with another video. Hope you're having an amazing day. As you can see, I'm still at my trailer. I have two more days here, so I'm going to try and get a bunch of all these kind of videos uh, where I kind of like to sit would be nice to get done here. So with that being said, we are doing some watercolor birds. I've never done watercolor paints on my channel. So it's going to be a little bit longer intro. I'm going to go through what I'm using. Um, things that I've, through watching videos, have heard that are good and kind of bad. So with that, this is what we're doing. Amazing, cute little birds. You don't have to do that many on one. You can just do a couple. I think it's cute. So with that, I'm going to show you. Um, I have been watching a few lovely ladies. The first one, I'm so sorry. The first one I have is, her name is Diane Antoni, Antone, um, watercolor. This is the inspiration for the birds. She has a lot of amazing um, beginners, um, wet on wet kind of product, pr 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 painting things, tutorials. I'm all tongue tied. So with that, I'm going to link that video in there. Also, the other couple ladies that I've been watching is um, Margaret, Margaret, M-A-R-G-O-T, Halleck, H-A-L-L-A-C. I will link her channel in there as well. She has a lot of um, amazing insights into different products, different things. And also the Mary, Marami Simple Craft. She is the amazing lady that I seen do the watercolor flowers with the glitter. Anything glitter. Go figure. Right? Glitter. <laughs> now that is um, also, let me just find it. I have it sitting right here. Um, that is the lady that had the inspiration for the glitter adding to the painting, which is kind of this one. So that is um, Mermi, M-A-R-E-M-I. And I'll link her also in the description box. So with that, I'm gonna go through all my products. Um, you don't need to go crazy, guys. If you've never ever really watercolored before, you can get those watercolor palettes at the dollar store. I purchased one in the States when my daughter and I went down there a couple months ago and intending to play around, but I never actually used it. Um, I think I did in one of my Timu hauls. I also bought a palette as well, and I bought these paintbrushes from them. You want them to be a nice thick, you want them to be pointy on the end so that you can, they hold the water, and you can also do some fine line work with them. So this was a kit from Timu, and it was a pretty half decent price. Um, so I'll link that in the description box. I just recently purchased these. These ones are, you've seen these all over the place. These are Color Factory. They are from the dollar store. They were $8.00. Everything's gone up. I went to that dollar store with more. Um, I'll link the video. Um, I did a walkthrough, not a very good camera job, but I took you into that dollar store that I keep going to up by my dad's. But the prices are just gone crazy. Like you would have got these for maybe $5. Everything is so expensive now. But anyways, so these were, look how thick they are. It says they're watercolor as well. So I bought these just to play, and there's these Philbert, Philberts. The Philberts are the rounded edged paintbrushes, which are nice if you wanna do flowers. So that'd be pretty. So I'm gonna put these aside. Now I'm gonna use these because these are the ones that I know that I'm gonna work today, because I've used them. So I don't wanna give you something and then we'll play around. So, and then one more other thing here. I bought these ones from Michaels. Don't ever go to Michaels and not use a coupon, guys, please. So these ones, and it has a, a round brush. It has a mop brush. It has a round wash brush. 
It has a, why are they calling them all wash brushes? That's hilarious because they're not wash br all wash brushes. So they have the round, they have the flat, kind of like a filbert. That one's like a stipply. To me, this would be a mop brush. This is a flat. And then this is the, the tapered. It's quite big. So this would be good if you want to do backgrounds and all that fun stuff. So I'm being interrupted today. I was in the middle of doing this earlier and my neighbors at the park left and they came to say goodbye. So it's just, yeah, my phone's ringing. It's one of those things. I'm so sorry, guys. So anyways, yeah, so I'll link that in there. That's from Michael's. And also the big thing you want to do is paper. Um, I started and I bought paper from the dollar store, but it, what does this say? It doesn't say, it just says quality paper, quality paper. <laughs> that is very funny. It doesn't say it's cold pressed. doesn't say whether it's hot pressed. It just says it is 300 GM GSM. I have no idea, but you can tell water paper. It is textured which is kind of neat. So this was okay when I was playing. So, you know, and you can always cut these in half. Don't worry about how big they are. You can take them down and cut them. Um, but then I went to Michael's and Michael's had their palettes on sale. So I bought these ones and these ones are cold press paper. I like these ones. And they're very, this one is very, very thick. So today we're going to use this one for our bird. It comes all glued together. It, this one is called a pad. You can get ones that are all blocked with the glue all the way around. So you can actually literally paint on that piece and not have it warp. That is awesome. I don't have any of that, but this is what we're going to use today. So this one is a... Oh, that's why. This one is 140 pound paper. And this one, I was wondering why this one was very thin. This one is only a 50 pound paper. So that's kind of neat. And you get, um, this one is seven by 10 and you get 50 sheets. And again, you can cut it in half. So pay, you know, you don't have to get stuck with the size. This one is a six by nine. They're all odd sizes because I tried to find frames for, to put with the other ones and they're odd sizes. So we're gonna pull that apart. I'm gonna put that over here on the floor. And then the other ones I bought also were these from Michael's as well. They're all cold pressed papers. This one is the 140 pound as well. So the thicker paper is nicer because it doesn't warp as much. So I'm just trying to make room on my table as we're going. So with that, we got our paper. We have our brushes. Now I'm just gonna use just a plain old pencil. This one I got at the dollar store. So you can draw, outline your, um, my pencil, your, your branch. And that's the only thing you use for this with the pencil. Now I purchased these. These are three different sizes of a, um, these calling a fine art pens, but I was preferring to use, um, let me see, my Sharpies, the fine one, sorry, is good. Also you can use this is the one I was using, which is kind of nice. This one is called the Sharpie Pen, very fine. And depending on how thick you wanted your lines, but a lot of the women that I've watched use like a ballpoint gel pen, or I'm not saying that, probably right. It's probably just a gel pen. And you can get them in different sizes. So that's why I picked this one up because a lot of them are using the 0.4 sizes of the gel pens. So this one came in a 0.2 millimeter, a 0.4 and a 0.7. And I got that at the dollar store. So 
So we're gonna use those. So I'm gonna move this out of the road. Move my book out of the way. And then we got our paper ready. And one other thing I'm gonna go through really, really quick is our paint. Now, like I said, you can go through and get those little, um, oh, I didn't say that before because I was interrupted. That was in the first part. <laughs> You can buy the watercolor palettes that are at the dollar store. You can buy them that they're like they're heat pressed into a little container. You spray them and it activates the paint and you can paint with it. Um, I found I played around with those a little bit. Didn't quite enjoy them, but there's some very beautiful quality ones of those. I purchased this one. This is Windsor and Newton. And I purchased this because it came in this case. I got this one from Michaels. It comes here. I'm going to turn you, bring you down a little bit. It comes with, I think there's 12, three, six, nine, 12. Look at that. I can count. I can still count guys. So there's 12 different paints and I like the tubes because they will dry, but you don't waste as much. And this little thing had a palette. So I won't have to squirt any of those paints out again unless I run out of in them in here. So what I do is I get my spray bottle, I spray all this down, and then we'll start from there. So that is cool. So I bought that. Um, you can go a cheaper quality paint if you wanted. This is from Michaels as well. It is the 30, I'm sorry about the glare. Let me move you back up. Maybe that'll be better. It is a 36 piece paint set. Um, 10 are metallics. And then the other 26 are beautiful colors. Now, the, like I said, it's the same as the, you know, the artist loft paint as opposed to all the other paint. It, this is kind of the bottom of the barrel. But if you wanted to start and play cheap, use your coupon. My apologies, cheap, use your coupon and you can really play. I think this one was, oh, I'm gonna say $60, but with a coupon, it was cheaper. So, and then you can buy other packets of Windsor Newton paints in a kit. I'm trying not to make a mess with my stuff. And I bought this one again, it's got 20 different paints in it and it's the same idea. They're a little smaller than these tubes that are in that container. Like they're smaller tubes, but you get more colors. So it is what it is. And again, you don't need 900 colors. You need your basics. Um, I watched a video where these um, lovely lady had mentioned that you need three colors. You need the yellow, the blue, and the red. And with each of those colors, you should have two of each. One is a cool and one is a warm. So you, that way you can combine and make all kinds of amazing colors. But if you don't want to combine paints, this is a good way to go. So with that, I'm now going to bring you down. I'm going to put you on pause first. I'm going to grab my water. I didn't want, dare want to put it on my table until I, I was ready because I knew I'd make a mess. So I'm going to put you on pause. I'm going to grab my water. I'm going to get everything together and we're going to make some birds. I'll see you in a sec, guys. Okay, I am back. So now we are going to do our branch. This one is quite tiny. Um, the other ones I did were a little bigger. So I'm just taking my pencil and we are going to draw not the leaves yet, but we're just going to draw the basic branch so we know where to put the birds. So we're going to do two birds. And I was making it so that the branch was coming off, but we're going to come down a little lower. I usually would come down about three quarters of your page just so that you're leaving room to build your birds up here. So I'm going to do this. And we're gonna come across. And we'll bring that up. Now we're gonna make this branch come down. And this is just an estimate, guys. This is, you can play with this later. 
and that's it, okay? Nothing fancy, nothing hard. And if you need to erase, you can use the end of here. But I have also purchased these white erasers, which are kind of nice as well. I'm hoping the lighting is good, guys, and I'm sorry. Again, like I said, I'm at my trailer. So that's that. We're going to leave that now. And we're going to proceed with the bird. What you want to do is I'm going to first prepare my paint. I was going to just use this and squirt it, but I thought, no, I'm going to show you how to do it. So I'm going to do a bird that's going to be half blue, like I've done them half and half, right? So I'm going to do one that has a yellow bottom with a green top. And then I'm going to do another one that has a very nice dark blue on the top. Oh, that's black. And then a lighter blue on the bottom. And then we're going to do some of the orange for the beak, white for the little spots, and black for the eye. Now what I'm going to do is I purchased this at that dollar store. It is just a serving dish. I wanted it, I've been seeing a lot of people use these amazing um, uh, glass dishes to use this, to do this on. And I thought, me being me, I wanted to have one. So this one is, the, these are all Windsor Newton, and this one is called the Parisian Blue. So that's going to be part of one. And I am not putting a lot, guys. I'm not putting a lot. I'm just putting, not even squeezing it because you do not use a lot. There you go, that's it. That's why I like this uh, paints because you don't use a whole lot. So I'm gonna keep these to the side and then that way I know what we're doing. So, and the bottom of the bird is gonna be the lighter blue. This one is the cerulean blue. I'm hoping you can read that, cerulean blue. I'm gonna put that beside this. And again, not a lot. And the lid back on. And the next one I'm gonna do is a sap green and a yellow bottom. So we're gonna put that here. Sap green. And the lemon, lemon yellow hue. Oh, I hate twisting them too much because the the actual tubes are very thin. I don't want to twist the tube itself. There we go. And for the beak, like I said, minimal, minimal for the beak. This one is the cadmium Red Hue. Pale Hue. Cadmium Pale Hue. And we're gonna, actually, I'll keep it all on the same side. Just a dot, because we are... All we're doing is putting in our little beak, so we're not even really going to need much. And then the white I'm using to put little spots on the backs of the birds. And I'm going to put that over here. And the black is basically just to put the eye on. You could actually even use your little your Sharpie if you desired to put the eye on. <clears throat> there we go. And now I'm going to move this out of my way so I can get a better angle here for you guys. So now I have a mason jar. A lot of people use two. One is clean, one is dirty. It depends on what you want to do. I'm using some paper towel. I'm gonna to grab another piece as well. And then we are gonna get into this because this is gonna be fun, my friends. So what you wanna do is I'm taking, I don't think the brush sizes on this set are right because 12, this is not a very big 12. So this is just a round watercolor brush. I'm wetting it, you can see, I'm just wetting it in here. I'm going to kind of dampen it off a bit and we are going to I'm going 
just going to spray a little water on this. No, we're going to wait. I'm going to put my rounds first because how you do this method is you don't need much paint. You just dip in the paint and the paint carries on. So what I'm going to do is I'm just estimating. So I'm going to put one bird here, one bird here, and you want to take your brush and you're going to paint. Now you can outline this with a pencil if you desire, but I'm just coming straight in and I'm going to paint with water. A chubby dubby little circle, just enough to make her bird. And you want to make sure it's wet, not sopping wet, but wet. I'm going to just a little bit more water on there. And then this is how your colors get on there and blend. Now, I'm going to hold it. I'm hoping you can see how much water is on there. And I apologize if you can't. So this bird, I'm going to do the dark blue on the top, the light blue on the bottom. I'm just dipping the corner of my brush and kind of putting it in my brush. I might add a little water in there just to make it flow. And then I'm taking it on the bottom and I'm just running it. Do you see how it just blends in there? And I would go halfway up on this side. Bring it right to the edge. And there we go. And because they're two blues that are kind of close, this one's darker, that's why I went the lighter one first. I'm just gonna dip my water, brush in my water again, add a little bit to the dark, darker blue so I can get that into my brush. And then I'm gonna do the top. Just splatting it then. Dun, 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 spot, spot, spot. There we go. And I'm gonna wipe my brush off on my paper towel. And then I'm gonna see if I can kind of blend a little. And it's kind of cool how that does that spreading effect. It makes it even look like a little more like leaves. Let me see if I can bring it in a little better. You see how it's doing that? That is awesome. You can choose to spread it around to color a little more. And I'm dipping in and I'm gonna clean off that brush. And then you can even add more water in the center and it'll even spread it a little more. I want that darker color to come out a little bit more. There, and that is, that's it. Is that not easy? Let me just clean this brush because you want to do clean water when you do your circle. And I'm going to do the same. I'm hoping it might pick up a little better so then you're a little closer. So it started here. Let's just get in here. So I'm going to paint another circle. And you don't want to go too close to the, um, to the branch. You want to leave enough room that you can actually draw your little I'm going to bring in, hopefully you can see that. I'm hoping you can see how it's wet all around there. Now I'm going to do green on the top, so yellow on the bottom. I'm picking up my cadmium yellow hue here. And again, a little bit of water just to get it flowing. Oh, I'm so sorry guys, get you flowing. And I'm going to tap along the bottom and I'm going to try to make the two colors so that he's half and half here. Right, and there we go. We're going to work our way like that. Rinse out that brush. Tap off that little excess. And I'm going to get into the green. And we're going to just get a little water into that. And we're going to do the same on the top. We're going to add the green. I'm just tapping it. You can see I'm not really brushing. I'm just tapping it. And you can mix it up a little. Like tap it so you can fill it in if you don't want that white in the middle. Or if you do want the white in the middle, you can bring back a little more just clean water and tap it in the middle. Well, this guy's... And then, so now we're going to have to wait for it to dry. You can either be patient and wait. 
or be unpatient like Sherry and I have my embossing gun here. You can, um, well, I'm going to take you back out. You can either use it to um, dry it, but be mindful because it'll blow. So you want to turn it on. It's going to be loud. I apologize, but do you see what I mean by it's blowing? So you want to be mindful of that. I wouldn't go right down on it because you don't want to disturb the nice pattern that's making. I'm going to let it dry on its own. So I'm going to come back when it's dry and then we're going to put our beaks, our eyes, we'll do our little funky tails and we will outline our branches, put some leaves on there, and we'll be done. So I'll be right back when it's dry, guys. Okay, we are back. It is dry. I just love the effect that you get. It is pretty cool. I apologize if you hear anything in the background. There's truck outside my trailer. So with that being said, I have a smaller brush, another round. This one says seven. I have dampened it so it's wet and we are going to put our little tails on. I normally did the tail, like say this is the dark, so I keep it dark. This is going to be the yellow, so I'll, I'll put it green. I did whatever I did on the top half. So I'm going to take a little green with my little palette here, and we're going to add some color, a little bit of water. And I'm going to bring it to a point. And I'm going to go from here where I color changed and just flick, flick, and flick. And it doesn't have to be nothing fancy, my friends. And that's it. That's our tail. That's pretty cool. I'm going to rinse out that brush. And I'm going to come back with the darker blue, which we used on this side. And you see how that's amazing, how that just reactivates pretty cool. I'm going to push that ahead so I can tilt this a little bit because, you know, I have to turn it so I can do it properly, guys. Kind of where they meet and just flick, flick. And they don't have to be, like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. And there we go. Our two little bird tails. Pretty cool. Now I'm going to take the same brush, actually, yeah, the same brush, it's wet. And I am going to go into this yellow, this orange, my apologies, the orange, I'm going to add a little water. This, I want it to be quite, I don't want it to be very watered down. I want it to be very pigmented. So I'm just, see what I'm doing there? And I'm making it a point. And then my beak, I'm just taking off that drip of water. I got this upside down. So my beak is going to be, I want the beak to be here and here. So we're just going to do just a triangle like this and fill it in. And again, nothing extravagant. I'll bring you in a little closer so you can see me do it on the other one paint on there, make it to a point, and then just a triangle. And fill that in. There we go, our beaks. So you didn't need a whole lot with that. And then now I wet my paint again with my brush and I got the black, and again, I'm gonna do the same idea. Let me do one, one I'll do with the Sharpie, one I'll do with the paint. So this one I'm gonna use, the black here. I'm just scooping in some paint, and I do not want it to be watered down, and I'm bringing it to a point. And now I'm gonna put the, I'm gonna go a little bit up Follow that line up a bit here, and we're going to do an eye. 
and I'm just doing it in kind of like a circle motion. I might add a little water to this. You can use a stylist if you'd like. And be mindful if I'm adding water. See, there we have an eye. If I'm adding water on top of what I've already painted, it's going to reactivate that water. So it'll come off. So you have to be mindful. And the other one, I'll show you how we can do it with the marker. I have this Sharpie, which is a little thicker. And make sure I don't... I'm going to turn it around. Get that up the road. Turn it around so you can see it. And I will put the eye kind of here. And I'm going to just do a circle with the Sharpie. There you go. It might even, it probably is easier with the Sharpie, my friends. And then with that, I'm taking the white and I'm not putting any water on it. I'm just, I'm, I'm just cleaning out my brush because I don't want the black on it. And this is the white that we put out. I just want to get that crusty off the top and work it into my brush. Add just a little water, bring it to a point, and then I'm gonna do it on this one because this one is probably wet. I'm just gonna do a dot right in the center, right in the center of that eye. Can you see it? That is cool. And then I'll do it on this one, and then we'll do that eye in a minute. I'm just gonna dip into more white paint and we're just gonna add dots onto the back of the bird. Make sure you bring it to a point. I'm just, I got water on the edge of my brush. I'm gonna take that off so it don't drip. And we're just gonna do little dots. Keep your brush up and down. There, little texture in there. We can do the same on the other bird more white paint. I want you to see what I'm doing. I'm sorry. More white paint. I don't know what side am I on? There we go. It's hard to see with the white on white. I'm just going to add a little bit of water just so I can. There we go. Bring your brush to a fine point and then I'm going to add the same little dots on this side. I can try the eye. Oh, there it worked. Okay. Done. Pretty easy. I'm just going to rinse out my brush. And guys, we are literally almost done. I'm going to get rid of my paint palette here. And now we're going to bring out the marker. This is the Sharpie. I'm going to use this one. This one is the call it the Sharpie pen. So, and I'm just going to outline my um, tree branch. So I'm going to bring it around. I'm going to bring it out so you can see a little better. And I'm just going to outline it. Nothing fancy. And if you go over, I wouldn't worry about it. over, under, it don't matter. And I'm gonna start from this corner and work our way out. And there, and then down here. It's kind of nice if you can do it in one swift move so you don't, I'm gonna bring that down a little bit. No stopping and starting. And it's wiggly, it's it's nature, my friends. It is nature. And what I did on the other ones, which I didn't do on the first one, I went in and I kind of put some lines to make it look like, I'll bring it in a little closer so you maybe you can see. I'm having a hard time seeing if you can see what I'm doing, guys. Very faint lines, they're not even very, just looks like the texture into the branch. 
Now we're gonna put a little feet on our guys. So I'm gonna go one here. I'm just gonna go right from the bottom of the bird and all the way down and do three little legs. And I'm gonna take a, almost like a little triangle like that. Same with the other one thing and like a triangle. Perfect. And then our other little guy, you can put them both in the front if you want. I just want him to look like he's not going to fall over, but you know, maybe it's me. And our little triangle. One more over here. And there we go. Easy, easy, easy. So now I'm going to take a little bit of brown. I'm going to take the, oh, let me see, a little bit of a different brush. This one's a 10. I'm going to wet it. And I didn't put any brown out. I can't believe I didn't do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to act, there we go, a little bit of brown. This is the um, Burnt Umber. I'm just gonna put a little bit on my little palette and we're gonna use that very watered down just to color in our branch. Easy peasy, if I can get this screwed. <laughs> I can get that screwed on there. I'm just gonna take my little, little bit of water, water that down. Cause this one, you don't want it like very, I want it very transparent. And you can pick up more paint as you're going. I'm just gonna go like this. And very thinly. Add it. That's why I drew in those lines because it gives that little bit of a texture. It looks like a branch. Add a little more paint from my palette. Very easy. And a little more and we'll do the finish the end here. Perfect. Um, we can rinse that out. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little, this, um, oh my gosh, the marker again, and I'm just going to do little petals. I'm going to show you on the back of this painting how I was going to draw them. I'm just doing kind of like a, I come out and do a half like this. I'm hoping you're seeing that and then come out and do the other half and then a line down the middle. Nothing extravagant. It's basically, I was just winging it. I'll show you what they look like. Kind of like a half moon circle. Oh my goodness, you can, can you see them? All right, let's see, let's see. And again, there's no rhyme, no reason. It is what it is. Put them wherever you want. I'm gonna bring it out so you can see a little better. And I'm hoping. And if they don't look perfect, it is what it is. Um, do a couple here. Like I said, that's what I like about doing these ones because it, it doesn't have to be perfect. So 
Some of them don't really look like leaves, <laughs> but it is what it is. Okay, we'll put a couple up here. And we'll put a couple down here. here that looks really bad now what I'm gonna do here is I'm just doing plain old handwritten not handwritten but just the the style all lowercase just nothing really grand and I'm gonna do here let me just see here um so this is me. We're going to go Sherry. And this is going to be Laura. And I'm going to use a thicker Sharpie. And And we're gonna do, oh, that one's too thick. Let me just, I just wanted to get this, make sure it's right. Oh, it's the same idea. I thought I had a thicker one there. I just wanted the bottom part to be a little thicker. So let's try this one. This is the seven mil from that one I bought at the dollar store. All right, and these are gonna be, uh, let's go up this way. Glitter. Glitter chicks. Wonder who that is for. <laughs> Basics, easy. And now we're just gonna put some green on those little leaves. I'm gonna go back to the smaller of the round brushes, wet it, get into this green that's already on my palette. And basically just touch some green into these. And if you go outside the lines, it don't matter. We are making abstract art. I'm just doing them all on this side so I don't put my arm in it. And we're gonna do this one down here. And again, like I said, this is, you can, this is endless guys. You could do so many things with this cute little thing. I just, I should have used the glitter paint that I made. We could have glitters. Now, if you wanted to, um, you could also do some splatters. We'll put some splatters on this. So I'm gonna take my blue, take the bigger of the brushes, I'm gonna add, I'm just using my dirty water. I'm just gonna add a lot of water. A little bit more paint maybe. And all I'm doing is taking it and going, watch it, tapping my brush. That's a bit heavy ones. Do a smaller brush. 
with the green. Mixing up the green, do the same idea. I actually kind of think I should have left it. And up the higher you go, I like to splat with a with a brush. I used to always do the splats with an old toothbrush, but the people on these videos are doing it this way. So, so there we go. We have some glitter chicks. So with that, my amazing people, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Hopefully it's not too long for you. Again, like I said, um, I'm going to get back into the swing of things. Oh my goodness. And hopefully, um, we'll be doing three videos a week. I hope, I hope, I hope. So, um, our next video is going to probably be some jewelry. I'm probably going to do another video like this with the flower and how to put the glitter on. And yeah, so I hope you enjoy today's video, my amazing people. Um, if you do like the video, please give it a th thumbs up and give it a share, give it a like. And if you are not yet subscribed, please, please think about subscribing and help me get to my next YouTube journey goal, which is almost there, 100,000 subscribers. Um, so with that being said, I'll see you all in the next one. And I'll leave the links to everything I have here today in my description box. Love you guys. Have a great day. Bye.